Welcome back to Dirty Curdy Customs. Today we're back on the Rat Rod Supra or uh, the Budget 2JZ. Um, why didn't anybody tell me that these things, like anything that says Supra or 2JZ, really expensive? I don't know why. But I got some parts from Drift Motion. I'll show you guys what I got, let you know what we're going to do. Hang on just a second. All right, so I showed you guys I got this rear sump oil pan. Hopefully that's what it's going to take to get this thing in here. I got the lower pan, which was $185. Doesn't come with bolts. Doesn't come with the drain plug. Like $185 doesn't even come with the hardware. Come on. Uh, this is the pickup we need for that. Um, I got the baffle. Also doesn't come with hardware. Like, come on, really? All the money I'm spending on this, no hardware. I got two things of... The FIPG Toyota sealant. Um, I guess they don't use gaskets on these. I got a rear main seal. I got the O-ring and, well, both O-rings for the VVTi to rebuild the VVTi. I got some bolts to throw our flywheel on here and a pilot bearing. Got a Toyota oil filter, um, a new PVC, and the O-ring we need for the oil pan. So, I, here's also the rear diff I got. Um, limited slip, both spinning the wrong, right way. And I believe, the guy said there was 430 gears in it. So, anyways, uh, I already started draining the oil on this. We're going to clean it up, get this bottom pan off, try to stab it in the Supra. I also got a front bumper and stuff for the Supra, so it's starting to look a little better. But anyways, plan is, by the end of this video, get this car running. If I can get the drive shaft, hopefully get it driving. If I can get that guy to send me the drive shaft. So, but for now, we're going to pull that oil pan, pull the flywheel, change the rear main seal, get the new oil pan on there, plunk it in here without the transmission, see if we can get it, see if we can get the motor to fit where we want if it looks like it fits where we want we'll pull it back out throw the transmission in there and i don't have a clutch alignment tool i'm gonna have to use pull the bell housing off that transmission and just use that transmission as a clutch alignment tool which probably work better anyways um and then we'll stab we'll get the bell housing back on the transmission stab it in stab the motor in and then it's all about wiring and once we can get it to start and stuff, we'll throw the rear diff in, hopefully have a drive line by that point. So anyways, I'm gonna get to work. Oh yeah, so the rear main seal, definitely leaking. I'm gonna take this whole thing off here and reseal this, it's definitely leaking. And I got the oil pan off. Engine looks pretty clean, I don't know. It might've been neglected an oil change a time or two, but next I gotta get this surface cleaned off. Gotta get that oil pan that we got cleaned up, thrown back on. So, pull this off next, get that cleaned up. All right, I got a rear main seal on, all sealed up. I got the lower pan on, <clears throat> got the pickup and the baffle on. I used liberal amounts of the silicone. Now I'm getting ready to put the bottom pan on. So there we go. For any of you guys doing this, they don't send you hardware, which is fine because all your old hardware will work. They don't send you a new gasket for the pickup. So I don't know if you're a perfectionist, remember order one. Me, I don't really care. So get this bottom pan on. See if it fits in the Supra. All right, lower oil pans on. I'm gonna get this up a little higher and then roll the Supra up underneath here and see if it'll fit. I haven't put the flywheel and clutch on yet. <clears throat> I wanna test fit this first and then I'll get uh, get that stuff put on get the transmission put in um reading and i guess this is an 87 supra 
And they say like the 88 and up, um, a 2J will pretty much drop right in with the regular, the stock 2J mounts and then <clears throat> um, the 7MG lower mounts or whatever. But somebody's modified this. So we could find an 80, if this doesn't work, I could try to find like an 88 front cross member. It was saying something about the cross member doesn't work with the 87 and you'd have to, you'll have to build custom mounts, which it looks like somebody already did in this car. So let's see how good of a job they did. I don't know if I don't like it, maybe I'll start looking for an 88 and up front cross member or 89 and up, whatever it is. So little did I know I was completely wrong about all of this. Anyways, get this thing in there. So I got it plopped in there. I'm really close. It looks like if I flip, <coughs> take the passenger side motor mount off, put it on the driver's side, vice versa, driver's side on passenger side, that this is going to fit. I still got to pull that piece of the motor mount on the uh, Lexus was broke, but <coughs> I think I got to pull those whole pucks out and uh, plop those in there to get it sitting high enough. So I'm going to pull it back out, swap those, get the pucks out of the leg, and try it again. All right, it took some fighting, but I got these pedestals sitting on those motor mounts. It's in. I'm hitting a little up here, but I think once we get the transmission on it, it'll pull it down a little more. <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is bolt the tranny up to it. And stick the trans and this in all together. It was it was a fight getting this in there. And because I still had no idea what I was talking about. Getting these pedestals. This one's broke. This one's bad. So I got to order a new one of those. But I think these are going to work. It looks like we got plenty of room for the transmission. It's kind of hard to see. I had to put a jack up under the front and kind of jack it up a little bit it's sitting crooked in there and i'm pretty sure it's because of this motor mount so we might have to modify the firewall a little there probably just uh, modify it with a hammer but it fits it's in there it's sitting in there on the motor mounts so next step is yank it back out flywheel clutch put the transmission on it all right, so I realized that these little pedestals, these little mounts that someone welded in here, those are from an 89 Supra, so these Lexus pedestals won't work. I went down, tried like four different parts stores in my town. Nobody has 89 Supra motor mounts, the rubber mounts. So I got them ordered. O'Reilly's was the only place that could get them tomorrow morning, so... I got them ordered. We're going to pull this back out now. Caden's home. Um, he's going to give me a hand. We're going to pull this out, put the flywheel clutch, bolt the transmission up, and then tomorrow when I get off work, I can pick up those motor mounts and hopefully slide all this stuff back in for the last time. All right. Got the clutch pulled off the flywheel. Um, looks like it's seen a little heat, but not too bad. Not much life left on this, but it's good enough for us. This flywheel is nice. It's real lightweight. Nice flywheel. So I'm going to get that stabbed on next. Hey, we got the transmission bolted up to the engine we're just waiting on those pedestals for tomorrow and then we can try to stab this thing back in so i did notice we need a clutch slave cylinder throttle cable has been cut so those are some other things i gotta get but we're getting closer to throwing this thing in so we're gonna call it for the night pick up our mess get the hood back on this and we'll be back tomorrow. All right, so we're back on the Super. I got Caden. He's painting valve covers. We got some new valve cover gaskets. 
He's throwing a coat of paint up under here. Looking real nice. We're gonna do all these fender wells and back there, but for now, we're just gonna do down there because we haven't pressure washed much of this. And I got the 89 Supra motor mounts, but we I had to do some modifying. So these have a little stud on them that didn't line up right. So I had to cut that off. And then these are the, whoo, that's hot, Lexus mounts right here. And they were too thick for the stud. I couldn't get the stud. I couldn't get the stud out of here. So I'm just grinding this down flat until I can get this stud in here, which I think I got this one. So I might need to go a little more, but I can get a nut on there now. So now that's gonna be our setup. That's gonna work. And I was still wrong about the motor mounts. So anyways, I'll get back to you, Caden. The color Caden shows for these, that's just primer right now. We're gonna paint this whole car white eventually. You know, right now it's the Rat Rod Supra, but he wants to go with white on the valve covers. So should look pretty good as long as we don't have any oil leaks. And this is looking real good. Gonna stab this thing in as soon as I get these motor mounts done. All right, transmission motor slid right in. Now we gotta figure out what angle we're gonna do these motor mounts at. Um, but look at that, beautiful. Motor's in. <coughs> transmission is essentially lining up. It's a little over, but. I can pretty much swing it over. We got a jack under it right now. We're really close. So let's get these motor mounts in. Fitting real nice though now. All right, so those motor mounts, the stock 2JZ motor mounts that I ground down did not work. Um, we got the motor sitting in there, but those motor mounts didn't line it up right they just they just wouldn't work so i had to spend more money and i ordered i might have figured this whole debacle out hopefully i ordered some motor mounts off of drift motion for an early uh supra subframe front subframe all right i think it's 86 and a half to early 89 um, that's the little pucks we got. I ordered them for 89 Supra and I guess they're early 89. So the later ones have round pucks, shorter motor mounts. So I'll show you what I ordered. Hopefully I'm hoping today that these work. Um, we can get the transmission bolted up, the motor bolted up. I ha I need to get the rear diff in because I haven't been able to find a drive shaft, but Caden's grandpa said that he would, pay for a drive shaft off drift motion a one-piece drive shaft they're like 420 dollars for a steel drive shaft so shout out uh big poppy for uh offering to buy that drive shaft so i gotta get all this stuff put in do a couple measurements and then we can order that drive shaft so then once it's all in we should have everything we need to get it running now and then we'll just be waiting on that drive shaft so i'll show you the motor mounts i got now all right, a little hard to see here. So yeah, these are the motor mounts I got. They're a little taller. They bolt up like this. And I'm really hoping this puts everything where we need it. If not, then uh, we could wall these out a little bit, get a little adjustment out of them. So yeah, these, another $150. Um, I got, here's the hardware for them. I got a clutch slave cylinder, hard line, steel braided line, and a clutch slave cylinder. So, end up selling some parts off the Lexus, some more parts. So, that's good. It's helping us pay for some of this stuff. Um, once we get this running, we'll do a little rundown of everything we spent so far, what it costs to get this running get the 2j's swapped into this and running so i'm gonna get to work the motor's already sitting in there i just need to jack the car up a little bit pull the motor up a little bit throw these motor mounts on and see if they're gonna work
So let's get to it. You can see I have those two JZ motor mounts in and we're hitting down here. We're hitting the front sub frame with the oil pan and the transmission just isn't lining up good with the hole. So yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's pretty sunny today, but it's not hitting on this side. Actually, it looks pretty good on this side, but it's real close, so jack this thing up. All right, got the new motor mounts in. They fit pretty good. Um, it's in there though, it's in the right spot. <coughs> Transmission's lined up. It looks like it's sitting a little crooked, but we got a flat tire here. So yeah, show you guys. Transmission is lined up perfectly. So now I gotta. I have to go get kids from school, but when I get back, and then uh, Caden has his final written test for drive school today, so we got to go do that. But when we get back, we're going to, I'm going to work on throwing the rear diff in, and then I'll have Caden work on the clutch slave cylinder, the starter. Uh, we got a piece of the fuel line we got to take off the Lexus, so... Yeah, I'm going to go get these kids. We'll get back. I'll stab the rear diff in, measure for the drive line, get that ordered as quick as possible, and then we'll continue putting the motor together, put the intake, exhaust on, all the little stuff, and then wiring and all that stuff. So here we go. Well, we ended up taking a break from the Supra for the rest of the day to go to a car show. We're down here at PIR, Portland International Raceway. They got a car show presented by Beaches. They got some drag racing going on, so show you guys some cars. I guess we're gonna have to work on the Supra tomorrow. fun at the 
car show last night. Um, now it's time to get back to work on the Supra. Throwing the rear diff in, gonna measure, order the drive shaft, and then time to get this thing put together and running. So here we go. So I got under here, somebody majorly reinforced all this. The welds look like poop, but I mean, there's a plate up here going across. Hopefully this rear diff fits in here. Hopefully they didn't have another rear diff in here, but it should. These should be the factory holes. Yeah, anyways, this was supposed to be a drift car, so someone might have just reinforced all this for drifting. I don't know. And all this looks, I guess I zoom out. Yeah, all this looks uh, factory, so I'm going to try to bench press this thing up in here, get a couple bolts in it. Here we go. The rear diff is in. I have measured for the drive shaft. Uh, all we got to do is probably going to drain the gear oil out of this. I got some limited slip uh, gear oil and uh, some gear oil with limited slip additive. So I got it measured. I measured 48 and 3 quarter inches. So I'm going to get that drive shaft ordered up. Oh yeah, also I noticed, see there's more bracing here. I don't know if this is factory or not. This control arm looks to be aftermarket maybe. The bushings don't look that bad. They almost look like they might be red, yeah. Red polyurethane bushings, so that's good. But yeah, see more bracing here. Kind of cool. She's going to be real sturdy all right so we got quite a bit done on the supra yesterday um and we got a bunch of stuff pulled off the lexus i had uh peel off and his buddy john come up and i told him i wanted the wiring harness out of that and the ignition the wires that go to the ignition and there's a few plugs that we still need to go to the ecu and they took the whole dash apart, got all the wiring out of there in one piece. So I'll show you guys that. So they took all the wiring. I think all I need is, I'm going to have to go through this. Let's see. Um, there's like three plugs in the mobile right here. I think I need these three or at least two out of the, this. So I, what I'm going to do is cut this harness up and then there's... The part that plugs into the ignition, I gotta find that. And there's a little box and stuff. But anyways, oh, I think it's this plug right here goes to the ignition, the immobilizer, which we're gonna use because we're gonna run the stock ECU. But yeah, they completely took this car apart. So we also need um. This part of the fuel line, which is leaking gas. Oh, my toe strap. Uh, oh my gosh, it's been leaking gas, that's not good. Anyways, we need this piece. I think it, yeah, it unbolts here. And we have pretty much the same line in the Supra. 
So this should bolt to it, run up to the intake. I'm really hoping that there is a fuel pump in the tank on this. The tank was loose when I was under there doing the rear diff. I tightened it back up. It looked like all the lines were going to the pickup. I'm hoping they didn't pull the pickup out and steal the fuel pump because you know whoever had this car before they just straight up pulled the whole drivetrain out like everything to make a 2j run so i'm hoping they didn't take the fuel pump but anyways it's new day here i'll show you how we got on the supra she's starting to look like a motor i want to run this forward facing intake that we have but we're gonna have to buy an adapter for it so for right now, we're sticking to budget build. We're gonna run the stock intake. Um, I had to cut the exhaust really short to get it to fit in there. So we're gonna need some kind of aftermarket header or his money, you know, he can buy himself a turbo manifold and a turbo and all that stuff. I'm just putting the car together, getting it running with this motor. Whatever Caden wants to do to it after that, he can save up his own money and buy the parts he wants and then i'll help him put them on you know and we can record some of that stuff but anyways i'm gonna get back to work i'm not gonna bore you guys we're pretty much down to figuring out wiring a couple more bolts in the intake i gotta figure out some cool lines oh also that the stock lexus radiator will not fit it's too wide it will not fit in here but so for now we're gonna have to get for now i have an old toyota four-wheel drive radiator out of a early 90s three-point slow Toyota and I'm pretty sure that'll fit in there and then we just have to rig up some kind of fan just for now you know we can get this thing started maybe run it a little bit with some coolant going through it and then uh, once we get that drive shaft we'll be able to drive it so I have been also trying to figure out some wiring on this car show you guys that um all this wiring right here this fuse box was just a jumbled up mess sitting here so i kind of got it organized i took some brackets out um it looks like this might be the power wire that powers this fuse box i'm not sure and then here's our power wire see this went to here right there and then this goes down to the starter so i don't know we got a lot of wiring to figure out still and then uh, we'll get back with you guys and get this thing ready to fire up. So stay tuned. All right, so I'll show you guys what I've done with the wiring so far. We got the whole motor put together. I have a wire running back to the fuel pump. For some reason, the back half of this car isn't getting power. So, and I haven't figured that out yet. I don't know we're missing a harness or it's not plugged in somewhere. I, I got to figure that out. So anyways, I just ran a wire that I can connect to the battery to run the fuel pump. These cars have like a two fuel pumps, like a regular pressure and a high pressure fuel pump from what I've been reading so far. And I'm not sure which one I'm even hooked into. So anyways, for the ECU, we are running the stock ECU. So this plug right here, is the immobilizer there is three wires that run to this little box this little box was under the dash of the lexus and it runs into this into the ignition so this little black ring around the ignition is the immobilizer it senses when the key is in the ignition that's all you need is the key to be in the ignition so then you have three wires going to it i have a blue and red a green and black and a let's see black and white i think so those three wires coming out of this little box run into this immobilizer plug same color on this plug so you just wire those in and then coming out of this little box there's a black and red that hooks straight to 12 volts it might be switched to 12 volts i'm not sure i have to look back at the uh at the paper anyways so we ran it to 12 volts and then there is a white and black which on toyota's is ground so that's running to the ground so the next thing you have is there's this big plug that comes out of the engine harness okay there is three wires on that that have to have 12 volts 
There's two black and white wires right here, okay? I can't remember. One's for um, your coil power. One's for uh, fuel injector power. And then the other one's for the mass airflow sensor. So you got two white and black ones. And then there's a black and red one that comes out of there. That needs 12 volts. And then the big wire in the middle, that is the trigger wire to your starter. So that's what I'm going to use to touch the battery. Okay, now coming out of this plug, I believe it's like F60 or something like that. There are uh, five wires that need power. They're all over here on the right side. There's a black and yellow, a black and red, and a black and red. Three right on this side. All need 12 volts. And then there is a black and orange and a black and yellow, I believe. Or maybe it's just the black and orange. Um, and those, no, it's the black and orange and black and yellow. Yeah, those have to have power too. So if you put all those wires, there's five in this plug, um, three in this big plug that comes out of your engine harness. Put all those to power and get your immobilizer wired up, power ground. The car should start. So we're going to try that out right now. Okay, we got a massive fuel leak. I figured out the fuel pump on this and we got a massive fuel leak where it looks like whoever had this last bolted up um, the 2JZ line to the factory super line. Uh, so, and I can't get it loose right now. It's leaking fuel everywhere, but we're going to see if this will start. <laughs> And it won't start. All right, trying this again. We still got a fuel leak. I got to get in there and figure it out. It's bad fuel leak. So we're not really building fuel pressure, but I got it to fire a little. So here we go. Woo! Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're not getting enough fuel. Because it's leaking everywhere. Okay, let's try this again. It's not building enough fuel pressure. It's just leaking out everywhere. Try it again. I gotta fix that fuel line. She wants to run! Yeah, not enough fuel. Alright, I'm gonna have to fix that fuel line. Woo! She's trying, it's gonna run. Alright, I'm gonna unhook all this. So, right here, where this, oops, wait, where this factory line goes into the 2J line. Uh, yeah, whoever owned this previously just cross threaded the crap out of it and it's rounded off and it's not tight. I can't reach in there right now to show you guys, but it just moves back and forth on the line. So what I'm going to have to do is probably the line from the Lexus won't work, but I can probably cut that part of the line off and then... <clears throat> Take the fitting from the Lexus and reflare the line and make that work. So that's the plan now. All right, so I got this Harbor Freight flaring kit. And uh, I've had it for a while, but I've never used it. I got it for another project. I end up never using it. Anyway, so I'm going to attempt to break this free. This is the fuel line off the Lexus. I'm going to attempt to get this fitting loose. And then I'm going to cut this fitting off. I'm going to cut the one off from the Supra and put this flare nut on there. I'm going to flare it, reflare that line. And, uh, yeah, put that flare nut on there. So, yeah, right there, that's what we need to make on the other fuel line. All right, got this old one cut off. 
got the new one put on. So I'm going to hook up all the power again and see if it'll start. Okay. Fuel pump, the fuel line is fixed. Trying to start the Budget 2J Rat Rod Supra now. <laughs> Alright, I don't think I have the fuel pump held on. She stay running. I don't know if it's getting too much fuel. We might be on the high pressure pump. She runs, baby. Ooh. Everybody here? Too much fuel or not enough. Batteries are weak too. Huh. She's trying to run. We got vacuum leaks. It runs! Yes! Yes! Thank you. I'm going to check for fuel leaks. Okay, here we go again. Ah, battery's dead. Throttle. We definitely got vacuum leaks everywhere, and we got something not hooked up right for the vacuum, but yes! Alright guys and girls, I think that's going to do it for this video. We got the 2J started up, got it all put together, we got some temporary wiring, so we got to finish the wiring, or we got to finish out, figure out what's wrong with the back half of this car, why we're not getting power to anything, the taillights won't work, nothing, so... Waiting on the drive shaft. Still got to find a radiator. Uh, I can't get the clutch to bleed. We're going to work on that some more. So you'll see all that next time on Dirty Curdy Customs. Hope you enjoyed the video. Been in my zone, feel it still in my spirit, I've been on my own Still just living my legend till my day's gone Still been feeling grateful just for making it home Giving me grace, feelings of God, let's give him some love, giving me space